Hello and welcome to another iClone 7 Academy tutorial. Today's topic will be basic intro to the new depth of field enhancement. With iClone's enhanced depth of field effect, you'll be able to achieve or simulate real wall cameras a lot closer. With straightforward slider adjustments, users will be able to change the focus distance, focus range, and blur. However, you are not stuck with just realism, you can push the boundaries well beyond what a real wall camera can do as well, to achieve any kind of stylized look that you wish. So you might say that Icon's depth of field tool is more of an artistic tool than a physically correct one. So how does the new depth of field work in Icon? Well, let's check out this video. As you can see, when depth of field is off, the entire frame is in focus, and this is being depicted by the red color here. As soon as we turn on depth of field, you will see that the area that is in focus is still red, but now you're getting also a near blur region as well as a far blur region. To change the, the focus, what you do is you either target your subject with a pick target icon or you move the focus distance slider. As you can see here, first we're going to focus on the front character, the closest to the camera, and then the furthest away. Notice that the focus range here does not change at all. With the real world camera, this would have a huge effect on the depth of field. If your camera is close to your subject, you would get what is called a shallow depth of field. However, if the camera is far away from the subject, you would, you would get what is called a deep depth of field. Now, with a shallow depth of field, the focus range is very tight. It's very, very narrow. Now, when you're talking about a deep depth of field, this means that the range or the focus range is very, very wide. Now, this will be done automatically when you're dealing with a real world camera. However, you notice here that no matter where we focused, front or back, the focus range never changed. This is something you're going to have to change manually. And this is basically uh, based on the knowledge of how depth of field works. So if you want it to be accurate, you would have to learn how depth of field work. If you're interested in a tutorial on how to make depth of field work in iClone properly, uh, please leave a comment below. And if we have enough people, we gladly make a tutorial for you guys, okay? All right, so not only do we have these three regions, but now you have also what is called a transition area. This will go from sharp to blurry in a nice smooth transition. You would have this purple one here, which is your near transition region, and then you have your orange one, which is your far transition region. And you can totally adjust this with the sliders as well, giving you full creative power. Now let's go ahead and take a look at depth of field inside iClone. So here we have our image, which has zero depth of field, is not active right now. As you can see, everything is in focus, all the way from the front sphere, all the way to the back. And as soon as we activate this, you will notice that the one sphere that is actually in focus is actually this green one. You can change focus by picking a target. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this icon here and I click pick on this front sphere, so now this one is in focus and the rest are in the far uh, blur area. Or I can pick one that is further way back here and then that one, that one sphere gets in focus and everything else is out of focus. Now this is a way that you can precisely control which area or our subject is in focus. You can also change the focus distance. This will allow you to control the same effect, but with the slider. 
So by moving the slider, you can see which areas are getting in focus. As you can see, the further I move away from my camera, the more and you know, the more spheres you can see way back there, more clearly. However, you will notice also that my my perfect focus range does not change no matter how close or how far my uh, focus distance is. And this is the area in which you actually have to enter it manually to make it feel more realistic. For example, like I said, if, they, if we're focusing on a very close object and the object is really close to the camera, you would have a much more shallow depth of field, meaning that our perfect focus range will be very, very minimal, very, very small. And only a small portion of the area of the sphere here would be in focus. Now, to see this more clearly, I'm going to go ahead and turn on what is called the field, field of view regions. And I'm going to go ahead and select first our green sphere. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, make the focus range a little bit smaller. So we have some areas that are blurred in the front and in the back. Another thing I would like to point out is that this value over here in the perfect focus range is only half of the total value. It's from the point we select to be in focus all the way to either the near or furthest plane that are still in focus. So the actual total value here would be 104. So this is something to keep in mind, all right? Now let's click that on and we can see what's going on. As I mentioned before, the red area is the area that is in focus. And by moving the focus distance here, we can see which spheres are going to be in focus by, by when they turn the color red. The blue one is your near blur, and the green, of course, is your far blur. And then the way you can control the, the, the transition between your sharp areas and your blur areas are what we call here again your near transition regions. Notice that as I move the slider here, you get a much smoother blur between the sharp, it's much smoother transition between your sharp areas or in focus areas and your blur areas. And this is totally customizable. Now let's take a look at like the same the, uh, the same uh, camera parameters, but from a third point of view. As you can see here, this is the camera we're viewing things from. And in here, you can see the areas that are in focus and which ones are the transition. As you can see, our sphere is outside the area that is in focus here. So I'm going to go ahead and move my focus distance slider so that it falls properly in the right in the proper area. These outer rectangles here are the areas that go from the inner to the outer, and these are your transition areas. So if we move the slider here, you can see how, can we, how we shrink or expand those transition areas that will go from in focus to the blurred area. Now, there is a little checkbox here that actually unlocks the near and far effects. Meaning that when you move, for example, your near transition, it will not affect your far transition area. So you can control this separately to get an even more accurate depth of field if that's what you're looking for. So you can totally cheat or be accurate about how the camera behaves. The same thing with the near and far blur. Now, this is not something that is actually going to move anything here, but you will see here that when I play with the blur for the near area, see how much, much, how much blurrier it gets in the near area and it's not affecting the far area. However, if I lock this on, the second I move this guys on, it will lock back to the same, to the exact same distance from the focus distance, which is basically the, the target that we picked to be in focus. So total control over depth of field. Fantastic nifty little tool here.
Now, there's one more thing I want to talk about, and this is areas in here. Because Iceland has depth of field in one pass, there are going to be areas where they should be blurry, but they're actually not because they're falling in an area that should be in focus, uh, that thinks it's in focus, but it really is not. Which is, for example, you can see how sharp the line here is in this uh, uh, sphere right in front of us. This should be blurry right here, and this should be a little blurry in this area over here. But because the near, because the, the in focus area and the near blur area are touching each other, it goes completely sharp. Now, to fix this, there is in preferences, there is a parameter here that is called soften edge. If we click on this, and then go back to our modify panel, there is another function called blur edge sample scale. Now, using this will slow down your machine a lot because it's doing four times the work that it needs to do otherwise. So for your preview area, you might want to have that checked off, but don't worry, once you render the full image, then at full resolution, then you, this is going to be automatically turned on when you do the final render. So do not worry about that. However, take a look at the edges here. If you want to see the effect that it's going to have on while you're working and you're tweaking your cameras. Notice here now we have a little softer edge here from the sharp in focus area and the blur area and definitely, definitely soft over here where you have your sharp area there and our front sphere now it's blurred at the edge right there so this is a way that you can fix this this situation when you have a, a camera angle that gives you this kind of issues so it's totally fixable in other words however remember if you have that on all the time it's really going to slow down your performance so Turn it only on when you're ready to tweak those areas first, and then when you do your final render, they're going to be automatically on for you, so you do not need to worry about that, because when you render that image, you will notice here, I'm going to go ahead and render this image real quick. I already have it set to final render, so if I click on my quick render here, you will notice that it is soft right here. The area is soft and the area is soft over here as well. So it's working like the way it should. So this will conclude this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And on the next one, we'll go ahead and target more advanced features from the new depth of field effect. Take care and have a good night.